All right, we're going to have the executive director of Beat the Streets New York tonight, Brendan Buckley. How is it going tonight? Uh, Buckley, Coach Buckley was a uh, NCAA Division One head coach for 19 years. Uh, you were at Columbia for how many years? 11. 11 at Columbia and eight years at Cal Poly, right? Five. Five, okay. And then where did you coach? Where were your other stops in there? Uh, my first job was UC Davis, in California. Okay. And then it was uh, University of Virginia. So UC Davis for a year, Virginia for two years, Columbia for 11, and then uh, five at Cal Poly. Okay. So you did the, we talked about this before. You've done the coast to coast. You've gone, you've gone East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast. Did I get that right? Yeah. 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 Um, Florida is your home state. You wrestled in Florida. Then you went to Clemson. Is that right? Yep. And then from Clemson, you transferred to Fresno State. Yeah? Fresno State. Where you were an All-American. Correct. What year were you an All-American at Fresno State? 97. And who won the weight? Colot. Oh, my God. Listen, I love talking to people about the weights that they were in. Uh, I had Sean Nelson, the head coach at Finley. His weight was Terry Brands, Sean Charles. <laughs> he told me somebody else. I'm like, oh, my God. And he took fourth at the weight. What What did you take at the weight? Seventh. Seventh. Oh, my God, dude. And then who was in the finals against Colette? Uh Chandler. <laughs> Roger Chandler? Yeah. Oh, my God. Ohio guy, by the way. He's You've got to know that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now you are out of the coaching end of things, right? Where you were at, um, you were in the Ivy League for 11 years at Columbia, and then you were out in the PAC 12 with Cal Poly. And now you are on the executive director end of things for a nonprofit. What is New York Beat the Streets? And um, what do you think the main mission of New York Beat the Streets is? And what is your role on that? It's two things. Uh, <clears throat> so we want to use, instill all the positive values, the lessons, the it's all the characteristics and, and wrestling traits that make us unique. Um, hard work, uh, discipline, perseverance, um, you know, know, knowing how to, uh, um, you know, set a goal and, and just work harder than anybody else to achieve it. And, um, uh, Nothing's harder than our sport. And so equipping the student athletes uh, that we work with in New York City, uh, what better way to help them achieve upward mobility um, uh, in, in various parts of, of New York City where the public education system in New York City is certainly challenged. Um, a lot of our kids and their personal lives have a lot of challenges. Um, uh, whether it's like, uh, you know, finances, uh, family structure, um, a lack of resources, and certainly just specific to wrestling. Um, our, our student athletes, their, you know, their parents are not paying for them to go to um, Apex or uh, The Edge or all the, you know, over 100 wrestling clubs here in New York, uh, in New Jersey, rather, where, where I live. And you know, dropping them off, paying for those fees, picking them up. Um, our kids, they go to their high school practice and then they jump on the subway, sometimes two hours to go get an additional practice. And so those 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 schools, those wrestling programs, they don't have resources to um, go to preseason tournaments, Super 32 qualifiers, um, uh uh, you know, and so we try and support those kids, give them the resources that they need to to succeed. And so we'll pile kids, you know, we'll, we, we are four, four programs. We run a training center. Uh, we have a middle school league with 25 programs. That's called the junior league. The training center is year round, four days a week. Um, we have a partnership with New York City High School Athletic League, the public schools athletic league. And then we have our own uh youth development focused uh, program called the Academy where 
a portion of the program is focused on wrestling and then a portion of it is focused on providing them life skills from nutrition to goal setting workshops. Um, tomorrow I'm going to uh, our uh, career career day and that program is called the Academy. So we're doing two things. So one track is, is instilling the values that they learn specifically from their experience on the wrestling mat. Um, the physical, uh, grueling, challenging, one-on-one -on -one nature of our sport that makes it so um, special and that uh, helps us achieve so many wonderful things in our life. But then also using it as a, as a hook to provide these other types of opportunities. Um, as I mentioned, these life skill workshops, uh, SAT prep, college prep work workshops, college visits, um, various social outings, um, camps, clinics, um, all these different kinds of things. And that's that's the universe uh, at Beat the Street. So kids, we have some kids, they they just want to come and, and uh, go to a training center. And then we have other kids who really want to get involved and they want to uh, be involved in the academy and they want to mentor kids in the junior league and they want to talk with us about uh, helping them choose a college and they want us to help them find a place where they can wrestle in college. Um, so it's, it's, we, we do a lot. We have a, a staff, there's about eight of us right now. Um, we have some part-time people too, but uh, it's a pretty robust organization in terms of the variety of um, opportunities that we try and provide for the kids we work with. So, you you know, there's different chapters of Beat the Streets, right? Um, there's Los Angeles, uh, Philadelphia, Detroit. I mean, Cleveland has it. All the major metropolitan areas in the United States, for the most part, that, you know, like the ones I just mentioned, um, they have pretty large uh, organizations there as well to reach out and help the kids of, let's say, Los Angeles, Los Angeles County. Uh, you know, there's obviously the Detroit Beat the Streets. Cleveland Beat the Streets is pretty um, big here. I went to a couple of their practices, checked out what they're doing, but beat the streets um, national, right? How how do you want these in every major cities? And are there still some, are you more worried about New York city and the five boroughs or do you guys worry about growth nationally into all the urban areas? Well, every city, <clears throat> there's, there's about a dozen cities. Uh, we're in about a dozen cities now. Um, we we're definitely all for the growth. Like there's no there's no competitive nature in terms of like we don't want that city to thrive. It's it's just not like that. We're all for the betterment and the growth of the sport. And everybody is doing a fantastic job. Everybody has a as a very, very you know, our mission is the same. It's to help kids through the sport of wrestling, uh, right? Mentor them, teach them the skills they need uh you know love on them support them provide them with opportunities connect them to people that can help them um and that's that's no different now how we go about doing it there might be little tweaks different uh you know like say philadelphia for example has a mentoring center and um we have an academy program um you know uh la has a future leaders program um you know, Chicago has their own wrestling room where they do lots, you know, not just their wrestling, but their mentoring. So, um, you know, there's, there's so many uh, great people leading these organizations and coaches help um, leading the way and, uh, you know, board members and people are really doing all they can to grow it. But the national movement, I'm on the board for Beat the Streets National, every executive director, every chapter um, has representation on the Beat the streets national board and it's specifically to that to what do we need to do to to add more programs in new cities add new chapters um and so we're all we're all in that mission together so you have uh one of your former assistant coaches uh is in los angeles right in yaru washington right yeah yep. yeah yep. right yaru's yep yeah so he was he with you at columbia yeah, we were teammates at Fresno State. Yeah, Yaru's one of my best friends. Yeah. So yeah. He's, so Yaru's, Yaru's been there over 10 years. He's the longest uh, standing um, uh, executive director, and he was just awarded at the uh, NCAs. 
for being uh, in his position for over a decade at LA. But he did. We did. We coached together as well at, Ch at Columbia. Do you guys compare notes? Do you say, hey, how are you guys doing this with your development center as opposed to what we're doing with kids, our mentoring program, whatever the programs are? Like you said, they're different. They have different aspects to them. Do you and him talk shop a lot about that and compare notes a lot about that a lot? What are your conversations like? And I'm, I'm guessing he's one of your best friends. You've been with this guy since the mid 90s, right? So uh, I'm guessing the conversations go from all aspects. But do you compare a lot of, uh, of notes with Yaru? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, all, all, I mean, especially Yaru because we're so close and we're so, you know, known each other for so long. But yeah, and that was, I always tell the story. That's how I got into Beat the Streets because I was at uh, Cal Poly and was considering to make a transition at some point. And uh, I went to one of his uh, benefits. And, you know, I was at Columbia when Beat the Streets New York first began. And uh, in the early days, and so had a pretty good understanding of what they were setting out to do. But it wasn't until I went to the benefit in LA that I really got a got a look behind the curtain to see everything that was going on. And they had a real impactful video about this young girl wrestling and kind of the two different paths she could go on. And you know, just seeing the the, the wrestling community come out to really get behind what they were doing. And so I found that incredibly inspiring. So. Um, yeah, we talk all the time. I mean, I talk to him sometimes more than a few days a week. Um, and same with, you know, we're, we, as I mentioned, we're all on the board, but I, there's a lot of synergy and everybody is all about sharing information and, um, you know, communicating about some of the same challenges. If it's somebody who's new in the role or kind of facing one of the same types of challenges or, Hey, you know, this is kind of what we did with that program. This works. So there's a whole lot of, uh, information sharing. Um, so, you know, you always try to help people, uh, uh, not have to make the same mistakes that, that you had and, uh, just share sort of best strategies and also just be there as like a sounding board. The big thing for me, for this event, for me is obviously, um, you know, it decides the, uh, the world team for the United States of America and all freestyles, women's freestyle, uh, men's freestyle and uh, Greco-Roman, right? And I think what gets lost in it is it's a fundraiser. It's your biggest fundraiser of the year. It raises over a million dollars last since 2019. I mean, going further back, you guys usually raise over a million dollars with this event. I don't know if people get it though, but a big part of this event for me is your Beat the Streets athletes being able to showcase themselves and lending the crowd to them. So it was last year, it was Torres versus Ba. That was the match for me. They yeah. put like 30 <laughs> points on the board. I believe Torres <laughs> went to Ithaca. Uh, Suleiman Ba went to Colombia. He's a great story. They're immigrants from Africa. I mean, and that's what I'm there for, right? Like I'm there to interview those kids, talk to those kids and, and, and like get their stories out and let people know what an amazing organization you are. Do you feel like sometimes it gets lost, you know, your athletes competing there and showcasing their abilities and, you know, how they've gone through, you know, they're in the five boroughs, right? Your athletes are the five boroughs, right? Yep. yep. Staten Island. Oh, I love this. I like doing this. Staten Island, uh, Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens. Did I get it? Well I did it. You got it. Let, let, look, I didn't look at my phone or anything. I did that right. That was right here. So those kids from those five boroughs, they travel from in to, to wrestle at certain practices, but now they get to go to, um, where are we at? The Prudential Center? Is that where we are in Newark? Prudential Center. You know, last year's at Hulu Theater. You've had it at Hulu Theater a couple of times. It's been in Times Square. It's been all around New York City. Um, but do you think that it sometimes gets lost that this is about the kids. This is really about, it's a fundraiser for Beat the Streets, and it's about the kids. But we're putting together a U.S. national team at the same time. Do you think that those things intermingle good like you want them to, or do sometimes the kids get lost in it? Um, well, first of all, I think everything about it is positive. Like, um, all eyes are on Final X uh, from everyone in the wrestling community. Um our program, our, our national teams have just been so dominant and, um, you know, wrestling is there's, there's like a, a fever, you know, um, 
I just, you know, when I, I, I don't remember, it, it certainly wasn't like that, like years ago with, with, um, you know, the storylines and uh, the dominance, just international success that, that we're having. Um, but, uh, you know, having a platform, you know, us playing a role in creating a platform and, um, you know, doing it in New York City and the Big Apple and doing it in these iconic venues. I mean, that was, that's Mike Novogratz's vision. And so it's been pretty interesting to see how we've evolved. Um, as an organization or program offerings for the student athletes, but you know, specific to the event being in places like an aircraft carrier, the USS Intrepid and Grand Central and Times Square and South Street Seaport with the Brooklyn Bridge in the background and selling out the Hulu Theater and doing a, a virtual event. I mean, we pivoted too, like having an event in COVID, in the heat of COVID. Um, and now to go to a full scale arena, we've never been in a full scale arena. It's a, it's a big arena. A lot of, I mean, the, I think I was told the, the TV screen in the Prudential is the largest in the world, like the largest indoor TV screen arena. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so. What's it's, capacity? Uh, What's, do you know capacity? You got to know stuff like that. What's, do you know? Yeah, it's 20. Yeah, it's 21. It's like 20,800. The bottom bowl is 8,200. So we're approaching <laughs> You're just 5, doing bottom 000. bowl, right? You're just doing bottom bowl. Well, I mean, I hope we, we supersede oh, that. I hope we see that. But I like the, it. The place will be, be rocking. If, you know, we feel, I think we, we're going to get close to, to 8,200. I love so, it. So anyways, it's kind of going off on a tangent, but just to talk about the, you know, the, just like just how big of an event it is and that it is it's it's it I think historically sometimes it was lost and so we wanted years ago to kind of change that and and bring the attention back to the kids because ultimately that's who, that's that's what this that's why we're hosting this event it doesn't mean that we don't want to watch you know all these incredible matchups that are taking place in all three styles and then knowing how many medalists we have coming back and going to work like it but the origins are that we wanted to grow the brand that is beat the streets and raise the resources we need to pay for our staff and coaches and coaches education and sending kids to tournaments and camps and clinics and paying to feed them and um you know, just doing all the things that we do or to be a full fledged operation. I mean, we have a, we have a team, you know, we have male coaches, female coaches, fundraising staff, finance staff, um, senior leadership, volunteers, uh, AmeriCorps employees. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And they're all here to, to, to support the kids. So um, I don't think it gets lost anymore. I think there is a time, I think sometimes it can, but that is why, we pivoted and we d decided to have a male speaker every time at, at the event, not at the after party. You know, doing things at an after party can be challenging. People have a drink in their hand, they're catching up, they've been in the arena all, all day, um, they're in a bar. And so we, we use the event itself to run, like, run a program meaning like okay here's the story here's what beat the streets is about we have videos last year we had a video called what is beat the streets we had a video called who is beat the streets we had uh we, we do our coaches awards we uh awarded uh this guy a posthumous award he, he had passed away after serving 35 years uh, at the psal which is one of our biggest partners that's the, the high school athletic league the public schools athletic league so anyways we we, we incorporate these storylines uh, into the arena when we have, you know, hopefully 8,000 people to really celebrate the great work that we do. And so this year, uh, the theme is, is how we are now into 10 years of uh, starting girls wrestling in New York City. So Beat the Streets was the first of its kind to have a, a girls only wrestling league, not girls on boys teams, but a separate season specific to all girls teams in high school versus all an, another uh completely female team and so we have approximately 20 of those so 
um yeah we worked hard at that but it's like it's i think now the store you know it has it is out there that this is not just the beat the streets match which i think it was at one time i love that you know obviously how you guys were able to bring into the cultural center of the United States of America, uh, uh, the United States of America and the world, New York city to me, right. I'm pretty biased on it's the greatest city on the planet. I know you are as well. Um, not to put words in your mouth, but I think we both think pretty highly of New York city, right? Oh man. It's, it's, it's it, right. The best. I mean, it's the center of everything. Of the world. I mean, and so for wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you it's walk the center of the world. I mean, when I would walk, you know, I was coaching at Columbia, you walk across that campus, as I, I, I sometimes hear like six different languages over, over like a few city blocks, and you're on the subway, you have every walk of life, you know, and it really is. If you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. You, you'll be in a, a subway, and you'll see someone, uh, you know, a, it could be a billionaire, a tycoon, you know, find. Or it could be someone who's, uh, you know, getting by, you know, a single mother with four kids on the subway train, just making it, uh, being there for her kids. And so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and, and then how that represents how, how we represent that. Like, you know, like I said, the, the, the things our kids have to do to just how important wrestling is and everything they have to do. Um, they, have, they have a lot of pride about about being New Yorkers. You one time were hosting this. You had like either Mark Bader or Joe Williamson. They came for a campus visit. You guys were walking around the campus and you walked into the Pulitzer Prize. That's right. <laughs> you that. You're like, oh no, they're giving the Pulitzer Prize right now. You guys literally walked into the building in <laughs> at Columbia where they were awarding the Pulitzer Prize, all the different Pulitzers, right? Am I making that up? Oh, true story. It was that amazing. is so awesome. I, I, didn't hear, I didn't think I heard him right. I'm like, loser. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome. Hey, first things first, my middle name is off on a tangent. I need you to know that. We're allowed to go off on a tangent. We don't need to keep some yeah. tight schedule. I don't do that. I don't know if you've noticed. I'm a gunslinger. I shoot from the hip. That ain't my style, okay? <laughs> so if we got to get reined in, we'll rein it in a little bit, but that's an amazing, but that like that right there, that epitomizes New York City. That epitomizes what you were doing at Columbia. That epitomizes what they're doing in the five boroughs with Beat the Streets and why I love going there, right? Like I always make the joke to people. I'm like, ah, oh, my favorite thing is leaving, right? Because I live out in the country and I can ride four wheelers and shoot guns here and cut trees down. But like going there once a year, it's just, it's overload for me. So much <laughs> overstimulation and over. We've made the joke before. Your wife's from Iowa, right? Yeah, yeah. When I'm always yeah. like the guy, it's always like, you, you know, like Hollywood. They always show this like kid showing up to Hollywood, or this kid from from the Midwest showing up to New York City, and they're like looking around. They're getting their pocket picked. There's some alien, you know, it's like some some alien walking into this incredible civilization. That's what I feel like. That's what I feel like, and it's like just crazy to think about it because it's just like so overwhelming and like to the point of it being the cultural center of everything and, and, and the bringing it back to the Pulitzer, you guys literally, and it was so organic. That was what was great about like old school flow wrestling. It was just yeah. this happen chance, dumb luck. You guys walked into the Pulitzer prize, right? I loved it. Yeah. Who was, do you remember? I think I don't remember if it was the same trip. Uh, but Martin and I took the subway. We took the seven train to. Um, we were at Shea Stadium that time. Uh, we saw the Mets play, and uh, somebody point. So, somebody recognized Martin. I think he. I'm sure he had his camera, and uh, we were out and you know we were in the stands and some guy came down and chatted uh, chatted with them for about twenty minutes. Um, yeah, those were times. I think. I'm, and then there was another time Martin stayed with me. And he, I, I put him on an air mattress. <laughs> he woke up and like there was like a, a very slow. And he woke up and he was on the hardwood floor. There was no air in the air mattress. So it was like talk telling that story. Okay. I him and I slept in the shoe like a thing with a like a like a like a four foot room in London. <laughs> it was like where everybody put their shoes. 
when we went to London for 2012, I slept back to back with him. It was like we didn't have any blankets, and it was where everybody was putting their shoes, and it was right where you walked up into the flat, and it was just like this like random dead space. It was probably something 200 years ago. Where was this? Where in London was this? In London. Spot? I don't know. We were in uh, uh, Hackney Park or Hackney Wick or something. We were in London for the London Olympics, and him and I slept in this room with a four-foot, three-and-a-half-foot ceiling. <laughs> Back to back, no blankets. So I'm just letting you know, for Martin Floriani, sleeping on an air mattress that was soft when he went to bed and woke up on a hardwood floor, he was fine. Trust me, he was fine. He slept under the sink one night in my hotel at the Ohio State tournament in 2008. <laughs> he slept okay. the vanity sink. Ah, <laughs> the good old days, right? Um. You know, like, like you said, having the, in these iconic venues, right? You go to these iconic venues, um, obviously Madison Square Garden. Um, it just, it doesn't get any better than Madison Square Garden. Hulu Theater off the back of it is, what? what, what is Hulu Theater? How many seats is that? 5,000. But So you've sold that out multiple times, right? We sold it out once last year. We were, it was three, we were, I think, still kind of lingering COVID. And, um, we were at 3,000. It was still, but that the, the sight lines in there are great. Like, oh. it's almost like you can tell. It's, it is anywhere. There is not a bad, yeah, because the, the, the seating goes up pretty gradually. It feels like I don't yeah, feel and, it. And the like, lights on the ceiling, oh, yeah, man. it has this feeling where all your attention goes to the, to the center of the arena. Yeah. Uh, I like, I did an interview with Slay and a couple other people where we were out in there mm -hmm. and I have those like, and it, it's got like really cool, um, how, how that disappears and goes at an angle. It's like really cool. And it really pops for the yeah. interview, man. And I, I, that, yeah. Hulu theater is something else. And the other thing is, I don't know if you've seen the videos. I'm guessing you haven't. I went all around Madison square garden. I like, was in the guts of Madison Square Garden everywhere, man, that I should not have been. Um, it was pretty cool. I like that. Um, at one point, they had, because Pulu Theater is where they do plays, they had us in all the different rooms, like wardrobe, costume, right. makeup. We were in all those rooms, and that was where they had a media room. You know, they had uh, athletes were doing, uh, I want to say, USADA or whatever, the anti-doping. drug testing, yep. Yeah, they had all that. It was so cool, man. And I was just like so into it. And I didn't want to stop moving, you know, the whole time. I think I walked like 15 miles that day. <laughs> no, I did. I'm not kidding. I walked like 15 miles because when you're there, you want to move around. And um, man, New York City. And then it, where were we at? The, the Renaissance afterwards? Um, One of the year. Well, so the Renaissance was after a Times Square match. Last year we went to um um oh god what's the name of it? I think it was the Renaissance. I'm not joking. I oh yeah, it was I'm sorry, the Renaissance you're right. It was the bar is called uh, I forget the name of it, but it was but it was it's in the Renaissance. You're right, you're right. It was in the Renaissance Hotel. That was really cool. And then just being on the, the rooftop with that bar we were on a rooftop bar, probably yeah. and you remember my buddy who was like the lead Todd Schaefer, he's the lead singer of um um railroad earth i don't know if you, you they're like they're a pretty pretty big popular jam band so he's a columbia wrestling alum he he performed uh at the after party i must have missed that i showed up late he played the whole time it was like first hour and a half or so yeah i, I missed yeah that. it was a great spot you had uh you had a view like outside patio and but man we're going to we're going to prudential we're pumped to be a prudential uh, Tell me about Prudential and why Prudential, because, you know, that's part of being the executive director. You find the venues and book the venues, right? And you obviously want to make sure that it's a venue that you can book. And obviously <laughs> the fundraising aspect of it's a huge part of that. You want to make sure that you're making money so you can run your uh, organization, right? It's a nonprofit 501c3. Um, you want to make sure you can run your organization. That's what this ensures. How do you pick the venues and what's that process like for you? This year is pretty difficult because 
we just were we were trying to find a, an arena that uh could house two mats not necessarily wanting one as large as msg or, or prudential center uh so this year we have three mats but so it, it, look, last year we had half of final x on one mat so it just made you know you would think okay we just need to get two mats uh if we have all of the matches twice as large as we were last year um but it was kind of difficult to find an arena that fit that because we were a little concerned about the expenses to rent a full-fledged full-scale arena like we're like prudential and um um uh, you know a little bit of the size like are we gonna be able to are we gonna be able to you know fill it out and how's how are the aesthetics how's it gonna look and um so we there there weren't really a lot of venues it was kind of like small venue or large venue we looked at i mean we probably looked at like a dozen different places we looked at barclay center msg you looked at barclay center yeah sort of nuts play right yeah yep we looked at uh the u.s open tennis center which is really really cool i really like that it's a little far that's on for... Queens, right? That's out by Shade. Yeah, That's out by uh, City Field, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's, I mean, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It, it's I mean, way the, out there. It's way the, out the, there. It is kind of far. Now, it's Five closer to Long Island. Long Island. Long Island people would be pretty stoked about it. Um, let's see. We looked at, um, you know, we looked at going to a raw space and then just can, e erecting everything, constructing it, but that comes with a lot of costs. You know, that's where a lot of the expenses go is when you just build it from scratch, right? As opposed to going into an arena where they have all the tech, all the lighting, uh, you know, everything that you need, seating. Otherwise, you're doing seating, risers. Um, so, I mean, we looked, yeah, we looked at like a dozen different places. We looked at this place, the University Theater. We looked at um, the armories. We looked... I mean, that probably took three months until we really kind of, until we finalized um, Prudential. But a big, a big reason that we did it um, is the guy who's leading it for us um, uh, is Dylan Wanagil. He's really a, a, a professional, uh, always treated us very well. He used to be at MSG when we ran our event at the Hulu Theater, and then he left and went to the Prudential Center and we have been talking the last couple of years trying to you know find an opportunity to do it and so when we looked at doing final x um i obviously thought of him and he's been terrific so he's great to work with uh he's doing an outstanding job he just did the ufc event uh recently um uh with uh Cejudo and sterling so he did the ncas when it was at msg so he knows wrestling i have come to get to know him well from our working experience. And so that was a big reason too, you know, they Prudential has really made us feel like we're a big deal and we, and we matter a lot. Uh, even if we're not a major say like traveling concert act, you know? And so that was important to us. Well, the, here's the other thing. I know that the event is based on, I mean, last year it was on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, right? Last year was on a, I actually think, it, so when we sold out Hulu, it was on a Monday. Okay. In 2019. Last year, I actually think it was. I can tell yeah, you. Actually. Let's see. I think, was it the 6th? Yeah, hold on. I can tell you. Um, Because uh, when I go to it, I keep my stuff in my. Um, I keep it in my uh, what my camera roll, so I can tell you. So my, I, I want to say it was a Tuesday. Oh man, I almost missed the flight last year too. It was, it was, it was getting dicey. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? But um, when I came, the, I guess the whole point to me is, it's New York City. It's you know, it's Jersey, right? You guys can do things on and off on what. Would be an off night. You could do it on a Monday night and sell out Hulu Theater because it's Manhattan, right? You can do it because you're always in these iconic locations. That's just how it is. They're giving you a Saturday night, right? We're doing this on a Saturday night this year. 
Yeah. I don't know the last time it was on a weekend. I can't even like think of the last time it was on a weekend because traditionally everything's booked by something bigger, better, more expensive, more revenue. That's why it's that's on a weird night for some people, right? Am I wrong? Uh, that that's part of it. The other is um, sort of like the the commuting culture, uh, people coming into the city on a weekday. Um, I know as a Jersey resident now, if you know, going back into the city on the weekend, uh, you know, after you're, you're com commuting, it's kind of asking a lot, right? And so you you always kind of like think that, that was a big part of it. I mean, the matchups that we had in 2019, just like, you know, hosting all of Final X, um, you know, we had had that conversation. Well, if you're going to do it on a weekday, it may make more sense to do it in the city. If you're going to do it on a weekend, it may make more sense to do it in New Jersey. Uh, the biggest driver for us was being able to tap into the New Jersey wrestling community where many of our donors, tons of our fans, uh, you know, members, you know, people co competing in final X coming from New Jersey. Um, New Jersey wrestling is a really big deal in New Jersey. My kid was in our rec league. There are 85 kids in a small town here. Wrestling really matters here. And, um, that was it. That was a that was a huge part. Some people aren't going to commute into. They're not going to want to drive, uh, say from Pennsylvania to go into the city. Whereas, being able to drive and not have to navigate, navigate into the city, take the GW Bridge or the Lincoln Tunnel. If you're not really coming into the city that much, and you you'd rather not deal with that. Being able to drive right parking garages right in in uh, Prudential Center, the New Jersey Path which is like the subway that goes into New York city, but it doesn't go all throughout the city. It's uh, like along the, the, the Hudson river um, that goes into New Jersey, that goes into um, Prudential or into New Jersey uh, Penn station. And then uh, uh, the New Jersey transit, the train that goes up all throughout New Jersey, a major hub is Newark Penn station from Newark Penn station. There's a five to 10 minute covered uh, walkway that goes all the way uh, to directly across the street from the Prudential Center. So it's uber convenient. Um, that area, there's some restaurants and there's some new shops that are in that area. So um, bus station. So it's only, I think it's 12 miles from Midtown Manhattan. Um, the Amtrak, you know, people are coming up from Philly, they can catch the Amtrak. It, it's, it's a very uh, convenient place to have uh, uh, Prudential Center because of Newark Penn Station and all the mass transportation opportunities there. Yeah, I like that. You know, like driving into Manhattan is not ideal. It's less than ideal, especially when you're the bumpkin from Ohio who walks in with his bags and is staring up at the building. He's getting his pocket picked. It's not It's not super conducive um, for someone like me, right? So like when you say New Newark, I mean, I'm, I'm going to drive, you know, like I I like that. I like being able to have a car, be able to come and go as I please. I'm guessing parking's not murder, right? Parking's probably okay. So I mean, yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm super excited. I mean, I've loved all. I loved the multiple Times Square venues that I've been to because I've been to two different places on Times Square. Um, uh, I haven't been to like the USS Intrepid. I didn't go to that one. I didn't go to Penn. Um, I didn't go to Grand Central, but um. Hulu Theater has been awesome. I think this is my fifth one. These have been awesome, man. I, I I can't say. I mean, it's just awesome. It's just like cultural center of the world. And, you know, it's like you're going to have the people who are going to come here. If they come to New uh, Newark, New Jersey, and they want to go to New York City, it's 15, 20 minutes away, right? Yeah. Yeah. On the, the, on the New Jersey Transit, uh, it's a 15-minute ride into – from Newark Penn Station to New York Penn Station, right into Manhattan. How much does it cost you to commute every day? And and how long is it? For me, where I live, to commute into the city? Yeah. It's 15 bucks a ride. I think if I get a pat, 13, 13, 50 a ride. So you're saying $27 a day to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. But it's just like the cost of doing business and it's just like you're used to it. It's, it's so much, I mean, it's so nice. Like I, 
I, I, I've been pretty, <laughs> pretty fortunate. I just never had to commute like for my, my entire professional working career. When I was at Columbia, I lived across the street. I lived down, I actually lived in lower Manhattan for a little bit, I lived in the East Village, but not very long. Most of the time I was in my 11 years at Columbia, I was probably walking to campus eight of those years. Cal Poly, I lived across the street. Um, I went to your house. I was in your house. I was at your house in in, uh, in San Luis Obispo, remember? I remember. We saw the uh, the mountain lion saw, uh, warning sign. Yeah, we were waiting for it. We were waiting to battle a mountain lion, right? I, I saw that video the other day. That video popped up for some reason. <laughs> you're like, I, I, you're like, I hope this isn't like real. We got history, man. We got history. I love it. Uh, are there any senior level matchups that you're most excited for? I mean, listen, I'm just gonna get mine out of the way. I want to see Blades, Adeline Gray. That is the one that I want to see again. Okay, I want to see if the the person who's been the face of uh, women's wrestling can can get back on top, or if the young up and comer is going to just I, I, listen. Did, I, did you? I don't know. Did you see them wrestle at the U.S. Open? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't what, at the U.S. Open. What's that? I said I wasn't there, but I watched it. Did you see how good the do? You, have you seen the Blades girls wrestle? Either yeah, one? that's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, pretty amazing. They're kind of like, if I'm saying it, like I almost feel like they're a whole level above the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I mean, I think they're unreal, man. They're they're unbelievable. Um, that one is huge for me. That's like the the biggest senior level match. Obviously, Jaden Cox, Kyle Snyder. Okay, we get it, we get it, right? Um, and Greco Kuhn, Colton Schultz. Those are the like just off the top of my head, you know. Not even looking at my phone or anything, just thinking right now i mean like but the blades gray match is like i'm pretty fired up and they're and everything's a two out of three right yeah so everybody wrestles first round like regardless everybody wrestles in the first round there's a two hour inner so just to go through it 2 p.m is the first session it ends at four so there's a two hour intermission from four to six well let me even go back there's true thirds that are going to start at 12 p.m and then the uh, 2 p.m. is the start of the first round of Final X. At 4 p.m., that ends. We have a two-hour break. And then we're going to have Beat the Streets um, student-athlete matches where Beat the Streets New York is going to take on different chapters. There will actually be a couple, a few matchups. We have L.A. Uh, participating, um, uh, D.C., uh, Baltimore, Philly, uh new england um so we have like you know we have chapters we have we have people coming from different um uh cities to compete in the event and then we're also we're still trying to figure out another we look we're looking at doing something outside of the arena as well but it's a long day so i think people are definitely going to want to get out and stretch their legs and grab a drink or something to eat. And then at 6 p.m., everybody returns. Um, oh, we have a couple uh, marquee matchups, New Jersey, like high-level matchups um, that we're about to be uh, announcing and releasing. Uh, one is going to be a male match. One is going to be females. Um, we have, uh, we're working on a little bit of entertainment right now to open up the second, uh, the evening match. And then that round will everybody wrestles for the second time if, if there's a matches where it's going to go to a third match we'll then immediately go into that so all said and done we're planning to be done at 9 30 and then we have our after party is right outside of the prudential center at a place called red's beer garden so it's a german restaurant and and beer hall uh we we went there about a month ago the food's really good we got this like really good like gourmet bacon that was delicious. Gourmet bacon? Are you kidding me? Does it look like I like bacon? Come on, you know I like some bacon. Come on, bro. No, but this is like this is like different. It's like German bacon. This isn't like breakfast bacon. This is like Listen, hard to describe what, how good this bacon. Is. I, I know my bacon's. I'm all right with bacon's. I want listen. You can't just like, hey Zab, country bumpkin, <laughs> Ohio bacon. It's not this. We're talking German. <laughs> New Jersey bacon, just step off. I will a little bit, but listen, I got to know this right now. Nick Suriano is like a folk hero in New Jersey. 
He's wrestling in a true third match. Hopefully he's wrestling in a true. He's slated to wrestle in a, a third, true third match versus uh, Camacho. Do you see like these, like when you have a Jersey guy on the card, right? Burroughs is on the card. Um, do you see the Jersey guys drawn out? And do you see that you guys can put 8,200 in there knowing that New Jersey has such a strong culture and they have some of former superstars that are going to be wrestling in this? Yeah, I mean, in, in 2019, uh, that's what that was a, a big drawing, uh, a big draw for New Jersey was we had Ash Nault, uh Ash Nault versus Green, two Jersey guys. Yeah, Suriano, uh, Burroughs. Um, was there? More, I'm trying to think. Was there another Jersey? So yeah, we had we had two NCA champs um, from Rutgers competing in our event. Um, yeah, we're, everybody loves to watch Suriano compete. Who doesn't? Yeah. And then you get like Yanni, Yanni, obviously New York guy. I mean, uh, Dave, New York guy who's with Nittany, Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. Um, yeah. unless, the Burroughs Marsteller went to three matches last year. You realize that, right? Oh yeah. I mean, and the Chance Marsteller like redemption story is like unreal, man. Like a guy was a he was in the throes of addiction. He beat it to come back and be a father, compete to get on this team, won the open, and now he's in that same position again against, you know, the goat, the goat himself, the pride of New Jersey. Uh, you know, Jordan. Yeah, and, and, yeah and that's a cool storyline. I mean, obviously yeah. Jordan in New Jersey and him, you know, returning home to and train at the PRTC. Mars Stellar is with the New York City Regional Training Center. That's a part of Columbia. Um, no, it's it, it, Gable Stevenson is back. Um, uh, I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of stars. There's a lot yeah. of there's there's a lot of hype for good reason. Gable, uh, you know, Gable, I don't think obviously Gable's trying to go into the WWE and make a splash, and you know, he's He's kind of bounced back and forth, right? And he came back and he's wrestled. He won the opening, looked unreal. He's got Mason Paris again, who he beat 12-1 at the open in the semis. Um, do you think there could be a Gable Steveson effect here a little bit? Do you think he could draw some? Do you think there could be some crossover with WWE people? What do you think? Yeah, we actually talked to him today. Um, we're trying to do a, a little promo. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's certainly – opens ourselves up to a, a very large and wide audience. Uh, so we're certainly hoping that that has an effect and impact. Okay. So I just got to tell you last week on my barbarian, this is the Ohio, uh, Ohio cast podcast. That's what you're on right now, but yeah. I got the barbarian, which you were on last year. Right. Um, I had Jacob Casper on, you know, Jacob Casper, all American at Duke two times heavyweight. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. Julius Creed and WWE next right now, NXT. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, you know, he he he's he's very confident in himself. He thinks he can roll with Gable. I was like, hey, I want that. I want that. He means it too. He's not talking like choreographed, taking a bump in the ring. I think he he wants to roll with Gable. I'm like, dude, he respects Gable too. He knows how good. Gable Steveson is um, obviously Bruce Baumgartner is the greatest uh, heavyweight in United States history. As far as international, do you feel like a Gable Steveson can get, depending on his longevity, he can be there. I think, do you think that? I think so. I think so. He's young, dominant. I mean, it's kind of interesting to see him come back and not have missed a beat. Um, is that certainly entertaining? Athletic, gifted, like, I mean, he's he's the real deal. So, you know, this is kind of a, you know, I asked David Taylor about this last year. And um, we went back to the scene of the crime last year for David Taylor. Um, in 2019, he tore his ACL wrestling Drew Foster at Hulu Theater. Right? And that is when it's like they just show up and wrestle, right? But now the world team spot's on the line. Do you think... Um, that it's a lot different now that there's actual team spot on the line as opposed to, Hey, this is a charity match and you can show up and maybe you get hurt. Maybe you don't. Do you think that that changes the dynamic for you guys and getting the stars in? 
Oh yeah. I mean, we're, it's, when it's a charity event in the sense of there's, there's nothing on the line. I mean, every, nobody, nobody wants to lose, right? Everybody, we try, we always try to put the biggest matchups together, but uh, it always had to be done. And look, I mean, the U S national team, they, they have one, one focus. They, and the athletes, they're, they're trying to win gold medals. So the timing always needs to work for them. Um, you know, the year that we, the, the last Olympics, we didn't have a benefit because it just wasn't worth it. We didn't, we didn't want to try because it just didn't make sense. And we, we always put together the matchup. So just logistically, that was incredibly challenging. You know, a lot of people just didn't want to see each other until final X, until it, it really mattered. So we were trying to do matchups between it, within the U S at sometimes guys at the same weight, sometimes, you know, a lightweight and an upper weight trying to arrive at a, at a, at a, at a weight class in between them. And, uh, it's just what, yeah. I mean, with final X, all that is just taken out of our hands. Yeah. All like, that they're is all trying all to, the like, they want to make, they're, they're, yeah, David Taylor blows yeah, me out here. Why would I want to wrestle in that? Right. So that part uh, makes it a lot easier for us to produce the event is not having to make up every matchup and going, uh, overseas and being concerned if we're going to get visas and i mean that was very uh there are a lot of logistics with the events uh pre-final x so especially with international people yeah what's crazy is like i remember you guys brought Hajar marat got salav in one year i remember that you've brought in i want to say like me dennis sargush i know you've Turbanov. i know you've brought in Ahmed chikayev i know you've brought in all these, just an array of, of Russians. I know you've brought in um, the Iranian team. That was actually in Grand Central, I believe. Um, yeah, right? It was Grand Central. And, and we did it um, in uh, in Times Square, too. Yeah. So you've brought in all these teams. Um, obviously, there's a conflict in Ukraine with uh, Russia. But the Russian athletes, are, are they're now back in. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. They're allowed to compete again. So that would all that another that's a whole other layer of obviously geopolitics, and then um, I know the Iranians some of them didn't get visas for the event down in Arlington, Texas, and the, the bout at the yeah. ballpark. There was that right, like that's what you're dealing with. I don't think people get that because this at event. Cuba, when we were when we had Cuba, they were supposed to meet at the Pan Ams. I mean, I'm talking like, like less than three weeks out and they like, they, they, they no showed. And so Bill Zadick and Rich Bender and P they had the, some, I mean, it ended up working out, but you know, you're talking like all the logistics and everything is, is already like, like at this stage, there's, I mean, there's still a lot to do, but a lot of the big pieces of this event have already been ironed out and major decisions weighed and, financial commitments made and uh it was like two and a half weeks out i was like yeah i don't know if they're gonna they, they didn't get their visas i don't know if they're gonna come <laughs> that's so insane um obviously the um the first woman to win an olympic gold medal for uh the united states in women's wrestling helen rulis will be there right and she looked real good last year right and helen is she talked about her longevity in the sport and she's talked about she had head injuries that she was dealing with. Um, came back and took a, a bronze medal in Tokyo. But um, you look at Helen, when, what she means to the event. Obviously, Adeline Gray, we talked about her versus Kennedy Blades. But growing women's wrestling, right? That's a big part of Beat the Streets. And your mission with Beat the Streets, you want to grow girls wrestling, you know, and then it's women's wrestling. What's it mean to be able to have the stars like, you know, our, our past world medalist, Dom Parrish, um, she looked excellent last year at final X, um, young girl from California, Emma Elor, that girl's unreal. Right. So if we look at the talent is just the talent pool is so deep, but the age spectrum is very large for women's wrestling yeah. in the United States. Right. When we talk about Adeline and, and, and Helen are, are over here, you got Kennedy blades and Emma Elor over here, right. They're young. They're 19, 20 years old. Right. I mean, they're young. What is that like yeah. that you're bringing stars like that in for the women's event and to grow 
the sport of women's wrestling? It's amazing. I mean, it's it's everything about us hosting this event. Um, it's it's a positive. It's it's an honor. It's a privilege. It, it our kids. It's a little bit harder this year, but we usually like we had like three hundred kids go to the event. Um, in 2019, we had a couple hundred last year. So for them to be able to see the athletes up close, we went to a workout at the New York Athletic Club one time with our student athletes and and the whole team just sat down and chatted with about a dozen kids. Um, and these are like their, their superheroes, you know? And so to, to be around them and, you know, for a lot of our kids, it, never been inside a place like Madison Square Garden or the Prudential Center. So to just be exposed to that and, you know, even just something as simple as after somebody wins a match and you, you kind of hear, you know, the microphone is in their face and you hear about what it meant for them and what an honor and privilege and, and, you know, what they had to fight through to become a world team member. Um, all those things have an impact on people, uh, especially when, when you're a young aspiring student athlete. So, um, for our girls that are, um, you know, have ambitious goals and uh, to be for them to be celebrating 10 years and knowing that people like Blades and Helen and all the women that are competing that evening are, are like paving the way for future generations. I know it means a lot. And it means a lot to all of us at Beaver Streets. Okay, so Kamal Bay is going to be taking on a 43-year-old. <laughs> Alexander Kikanu, right? Did you have you did you see that? Uh no. He's 43 years old. Oh, I didn't know he was that old. 43. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he looks really amazing. 43. That's amazing. That's amazing, right? I saw it. I mean, I, I can't be wrong. No, I'm not wrong. He's 43. That's wild, right? Uh, That's wild uh, to think that. Small Bay is a showstopper, right? He's a, an hour and an hour, hour, like the dude's unreal. Um, who's coming off of a, a ban from last year. I mean, there's a there's a lot of up and down. Or like a lot of people just don't know much about Greco, right? We're gonna get to see the whole lineup battle for team spots, right? We're gonna get to see people that are not the household names, they're not the Jordan Burroughs, they're not the David Taylors, and they're not Gable Stevenson's, right? Like those, those are the stars of the sport. The Adeline Grays, they're the start, you know, Helen Marulis, the, those are the you know, people who have Olympic medals and or Olympic gold medals, world championships. That's who people know. They don't know who Brady Koontz is. Brady, Brady Koontz has got a twin brother, wrestled at Ohio State. I'm going to take on Dalton Duffield. You know what I mean? Like, there's these guys. What do you think it is to lend the freestyle stars to it and the women's freestyle stardom to the men's Greco-Roman and putting the Greco-Roman in there too? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's super cool. I, I you know, what's kind of interesting, just unique about this, having three mats, we've been able to seat like the Greco team and supporters and parents uh, onto, uh, in front of the Greco mat and the same with the women. And, and so it's pretty cool that the parents and the family members and the fans who are really focused in their de desired style have the ability to get seats that are right in front of the the weights and the styles that matter the most to them. That's kind of sweet. Uh, I love it's it. It's great to be able to have it all. Yeah, I know USA Wrestling was big on this. Um, you know, they wanted to have every everybody at it. He's forty three. <laughs> I love it. Oh, total beast! Oh my god, I'm fired up that man. That Kamal Bay's a mutant, too. You know that, right? The dudes oh, yeah. are both two complete freaks. I, if you're not fired up about that match, you better be now because, dude, that is going to be like this old. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of gr great Greco Greco bouts, and they opened up strong too last year. We're yeah. pumped to have Greco. I love it. I'm excited, man. I'm super excited about Greco. Well, dude, it's just like people don't want to learn about Greco. They don't. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. They say negative things about it, but I'm like. Have you watched Greco? Have you figured it out? Do you know what the score? You know, like learn the rules. Let's let's go. Let's rock here. I mean, we need this. We've got to support the Greco athletes, or we're never going to have the success that we should be having, right? And it's just like bringing them to where you know, bringing them to Hulu Center, you know, Hulu Theater, bringing them to 
Prudential Center, I mean, it's logical to me. It only makes sense, right? No, man, we're, we're, we're pumped. We're... All yeah, right. Kind of... Go ahead. What do you, what do you think the biggest thing about moving it out of New York city is um, for you besides tapping into, you know, New Jersey, you know, you talk about New Jersey, such a strong straight state, you know, it's like everybody knows that in high school wrestling, it's Pennsylvania, Jersey, Ohio, Illinois, California, traditionally, you know, just like off the top. Of, and I know Florida, sorry. I know Florida is really good at high school wrestling. Know, actually, actually vastly improved by the way, really good. Florida's now, once I left, they started becoming pretty competitive. Florida's really tough, actually. But you know what I'm saying? The five traditional powers that I just mentioned, right? Like Midwest, East Coast, right? Pennsylvania, everybody knows there's no doubt you were a college coach. You know that. Um, but Jersey, right? Tapping into Jersey. What else besides tapping into the wrestling community of New Jersey and a world-class arena? Why New Jersey? Besides those two things, is there anything else you can tell me? Or is, did you pretty much cover it with that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it, knowing, I mean, we went through the data too. I mean, we looked at where all the like people who purchased tickets, like what their zip codes were, so we could see, hey, like it was pretty much evenly split between New York State and New Jersey. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's convenient. I think it's more convenient for the average wrestling fan. Financially, um, it was a good, a good fit for us. Uh, I think it was a, it's it's just inspiring for us to try and try and hit eighty two hundred. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, being able to work with this guy Dylan, and you know, we're we're we feel like we're special and we're important. Uh, this event, uh, I think it's unique. Most you don't see nonprofit organizations putting together this kind of an event. Um, the traditional nonprofit benefit is, uh, you know, a a nice venue in the city where there's a cocktail hour, there's a guest speaker, um, there's a dinner, a seated dinner, and then there's an auctioneer. I mean, we pretty much blew the lid off that. And we've not that there's anything wrong with that. We might do that to switch it up every so often, but we, uh, you know, each year it's almost like we're trying to outdo, <laughs> I mean, it's a challenge. And uh, it's hard, but it's almost like we challenge ourselves to do better each and every year, you know, and, and that's setting the bar pretty high because we've had some pretty incredible um, annual events. And like I said, go, we went from being outside, the most we ever had at Times Square is like 600 people. When we went to South Street Seaport, we doubled it, went to 1,200, and then we almost got rained out and was... The, the line of thinking was, well, we don't want to have to deal with the weather anymore. Let's go into the theater. But then it was, oh, it's large. Like, I don't know how we're going to be able to fill the arena. Is it going to be empty? And then boom, right? We we sold it out with 5,000. I mean, that blew everybody's expectations out of the water. And then, you know, like I said, we, we just continued to pivot. And now to go to a full-scale arena is very inspiring. We, we want to sell 8,200 seats. Um, we would love to have the challenge of having to hire more staff at the Prudential Center to be able to work our way up into that upper bowl. So we're hoping our fans continue to buy tickets and our donors continue to support the event to uh, make this our, our biggest and best event yet. Where can people get tickets if they want to online? Uh, Ticketmaster. You can just Google um, Final X Ticketmaster. Um, you could go get it through the Prudential Center website. You can go onto our website, btsny.org. Um, if you want to buy a ticket, you know, the after party is a really big part of this event. It's, it's what makes it so special is after the athletes war with one another, they all go in and we have a nice dinner and um, fans are there to shake hands and meet the team. And it's, it, it's, it's pretty remarkable. You have men's, freestyle women's freestyle greco their team and coaches and their family members um uh, our donors our board it's uh it's just a really cool event and that's like the culmination of i mean this will be this is we've been working on this for six months now so uh 
we're looking forward to putting together a great show and then seeing everybody at the after party and being able to celebrate. There's always so if I want to get a ticket to the after party. Oh, you can do that. People can yeah, do that. So, yeah. So the way it works is you, if you want to go to just the match final X, then you can do that on Ticketmaster. You can also same thing, access that site, that page through our website. But if you want a, a, a benefit ticket that includes a match to final X, and then it also includes a ticket to the after party. And so all that can be found on our website, btsny.org. We have, uh, ticket packages, they go from 1000 to 100000 if you wanted to be a title sponsor. But uh, we have a lot of corporate corporations that are buying packages and batches of tickets to go to the match and the after party. Um, and then, like I said, people can keep checking Ticketmaster to, uh, uh, to, 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 to choose where they want. If they want to sit by freestyle, they want to sit by Greco, they want to sit by women's freestyle, they have the ability to do that. Okay, there's always star power at this event. I've interviewed uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson there. I've interviewed Dana White there. I've seen Matthew Mo uh What's his name? Frank Jasper, the guy who played Shoot. I mean, you guys have had pretty much, um, uh, was it Aoki, right? The DJ, he's there. <laughs> Stevie Aoki, yeah, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? You've had him. You've had, there's always star power. You know, Mike Novogratz, he's always there. We have Kelly, yeah, Kelly yeah. Rippa and yeah, well, uh, Kelly Mark Rippa's from Rippa. Jersey, right? Um, I'm sorry, what did you hear? Is Kelly Rippa from Jersey? I'm not exactly sure, but she, her their son wrestles in Michigan. They're a big yeah, I wrestler. know that. I know that. But who wrestling. did you expect this year? Do you got any, you got you got anybody got anybody for people to be on the lookout for? I can't give away. I can't reveal those cards yet. You have to buy a ticket and go. Did you get your ticket yet? I I I don't I don't need a second. I I just applied for credentials and show up. That's my ID. I think my ID. I just show my ID, and they're like, "Oh, you're here. Okay, you're good." That was good. I like that though. I'm I'm like, "Oh no, I gotta get on ticket." Right, what what am I doing? You have any I, th I think I'm gonna be okay. I already got my approval from USA Wrestling. We got you. Yeah, we got you. Take care of business. Um. I know you feel like a brick that has been thrown in a dryer. I know that you're feeling like a brick that's been thrown in a dryer. Do you want me to run you through and ask you who you got? Do you want any picks or not? You want me to give you five? You want me to give you five matches and let you pick? No, I don't, I don't get into that. I, I, Come I, on. I, Hold on. Give me one. Ready? The most highly anticipated. Well, the two most highly anticipated. Men's freestyle. Kyle Snyder or Jaden Cox? You, I, I told you, man. I, I, I just, I, we, I'm, I'm, I have to be a diplomat here. Listen, stop. <laughs> I just you want your answer. Here's what I, you say. Zab, the fans win. The, the fans, fans win. win. The there fans, you and go. The kids win. Are the Beat the Street student athletes the win? Ki the kids from Beat the Streets win. When you donate and you buy it, there you go. Come on, man. You, I shouldn't have to coach you through that. Um, obviously, Kyle Dick, Jason Knopf's a rematch from last year. Jason Knopf had yeah. the only takedown and lost the match. Right? It's wild. And then we got we got a New York guy and a and a PA guy. So we should see a big crowd from those two. And then um obviously Kennedy Blades, Adeline Gray, that's mine. I mean, that's like my Yeah, that's what's good. That I'm was excited about season. That's pretty excited. Right. Yeah. Kennedy Blades. If Kennedy Blades dominates her in two out of three matches straight, they're going to need like some type of weapon at the world championships, like a crowbar in their singlet or like a shovel on the mat with them, like a flat, like a, like a hit her with a, hit her with a shovel or something. It's the only way you're going to beat her. And then uh, Colton Schultz, um, Adam Kuhn, that's my, my big one. Those are the three. I mean, those are the ones I look at that I'm like very excited about. I know that you, sir, have to remain neutral, but the fans and the kids do win, right? <laughs> the fans win. The kids win. I win. I get to have you come out and work this event with us again. Yeah, we got to go catch a concert. Still got to catch a concert. Still went to an all-time great concert, didn't we? Top three of all times, Ed. Oh, man. Great concert. Um, All right, man. Well, you got anything else for me? 
No, man, just pump. Thanks for, thanks for having me on the show. I'm glad yeah. I get to do this with you again. Yeah. Um, just as you said, just the, the entire reason we do this is to raise funds and resources for our kids. And uh, yeah, I mean, having, having a, a youth, you know, beat the streets is, is the only one of its kind, whether it's in New York or uh, Philly, LA, Chicago, Lancaster, PA, DC, New England, Cleveland. Um, we're all doing great work. And so it's about building that, um, the swell of support. Um, and so people are coming to this, this event or they're watching from home. Um, they don't necessarily have to give to beat the streets in New York, but give to your local chapter and go volunteer and, and, um, give back to the sport that did so much for us. And, um, uh, but it's, it's, it's exciting to be able to watch our, the world's best athletes and seeing people just our idols, um, you know, just the, the the very, very, very few who have the ability to have made this a profession to be one of the world's greats. And so we're we're just honored and privileged and can't wait to uh to see the fireworks. You have a picture of the New York skyline behind you with the twin towers in it. Um obviously it's you know it's a really special and this you know that picture's obviously something that's historical. It's been a huge part of our lives, my life, your life. Um but you guys have done this in so many non-traditional places that are not sports venues. Do you think it'll ever return back to that, the Grand Central Station, the, 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 you know, you said you only sold 600 tickets at the, the Times Square. It really takes away from the fundraising aspect of it when you can't put it in an arena. Would you guys ever consider going back to like if World Trade Center won the new Trade Center one, if it has a big, lobby area you know is that ever something where you go back to grand central station you'll go back to Times square will you guys ever consider that but since they're they're not really venues where you bring people in and there's seating and tickets to sell right but it puts exposure and there's people walking by and it exposes the general yeah. public wrestling. would you ever do that again i think so yeah we've you know one of our core values is uh thinking outside the box and so being able to uh keep people on our toes. There's so many cool venues in New York. I would love to do it at Bryant Park uh, one day, which is the park beside um, uh, in Midtown behind the New York Public Library. Radio uh, City Music Hall? Uh, we looked at Radio City. We uh, we did. We looked at Radio City. We've looked at the Beacon. There's New York City. New York City is just the best. The 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 venues that we have uh it would change a little bit we couldn't fit three mats in a lot of those but being able to have one mat in a super cool historic venue like the beacon or doing something outside in bryant park we've looked at central park we've looked at doing it down um on the new york like in lower manhattan um what's it called um, I forget the name of it. It's, what, it's like, I'm going to tell you. The exchange uh, place. What's that? It makes it for me, though. Like, when I know I look forward to this, like, historical, nostalgic, amazing people watching the center of the universe. That's what it is to me. That's what, like, why this is so near and dear to my heart, man. Like, doing the 2012, um, uh, the one where it was in Times Square and Coleman Scott made the Olympic team and beat Sean Bunch and Reese Humphrey. And that was just like the nostalgia for me and like the memories of that are just like so vivid, man. And it's just like you're in New York City. You're in New York City and your your favorite thing ever, wrestling, right? For me at least, well, my favorite sport ever. Um, it's there in this area and this this the the center of the universe for me in the cultural world for humans is New York city. And it's just like, it just makes sense. It just like, it really just, what you guys have done and what you've created is something so special. I can't even like, it's like awesome to think about and be a part of it. I like, love it. I love it. I like love coming to it every dance I get. We love having you buddy. Yeah. I like coming home and mowing my lawn and maybe like doing some target shooting though too. And or whacking weeds or cutting a tree down. I, I trust me. I like that more. But like just to be there and be a part of this thing and know that it can be in these iconic venues and 
places that aren't even venues and the outside the box thinking man it just fires me up all right buddy are we good is there anything else yeah, you man, got? We, covered, we covered a lot of ground yeah you know i do that i did you know I, i'm here i'm there you know. <laughs> what day are you getting in um i think we're gonna oh oh is there a presser on friday Yes. All right. Well, I'm um, going to come for the press. I will, I will get you the details on that. Give it's me in the, the details on the press. And um, I'll let you know when I'm going to be in based on the presser. Are you, hey, are you taking notes right now? <laughs> yes. All right. Hey, I'm going to cut this off. Stick around, all right? All right, buddy. Executive director, beat the streets, New York City coach, Brendan Buckley. Thank you for the time.